So hi, I'm going to be talking about extending Gottesman types beyond the Clifford group. Uh, um, and this is a joint work with Arthur Sundaram and Brad Lackey, both from Microsoft Quantum and Karthik Singal, who you just seen, who's at the University of Chicago. So um, uh, your first question, when I st started this off is, what types, what are Gottesman types exactly? So Gottesman types are stem from Gottesman's famous paper called the Heisenberg Interpretation of Quantum Computing, which is best known for what's called the gottesman neal theorem, that the Clifford group is efficiently simulable on a um, regular computer. And what I found interesting about this paper is that it has a whole bunch of things that look like types. In other words, it has a characterization of H, S, and C0, all of which looked very much to me like their types. And in a QPL paper last year, um, we decided that we would create a type system out of this. And we gave this a very simple semantics. So if H has the type X to Z, then that means that H takes a plus minus one eigenstate or eigenvector of X, which is the plus or minus state, to a plus or minus one eigenstate of Z, which are your computational basis states, zero and one. And this, this is something to keep in mind. The type X corresponds to the term, which is its eigenstate. Um, so this set of types may look a little bit too much to your average person who uses types. Um, C0 has four different types that here. So we'll compact it a little bit by using intersection types, which are a fun tool of the type theorist. So now we can give complete, um, fully descriptive types to all, to all three of these gates. And um, note that simply giving the, these types um, for both for the, for the various combinations of, of X and Z is information theoretically complete. So we don't need to include other types in order to have a very rich type system. Um, so to give you a flavor for what this type system can do, let's take a look at C0. And here I've, you know, I'm just taking a um, two out of the four parts of the, in, parts of the C0 intersection type. And um, so we have Z tensor I goes to Z tensor I and I tensor Z goes to Z tensor Z. So first observation is that Z tensor I corresponds to a separable pair, the first of which is in the Z basis, the second of which could be in an arbitrary basis. And that's important and useful to know. Likewise, for the other ZIs and IZs that we see, whereas Z tensor Z could very well be an entangled state, as we'll see in a little bit. Um, so I can, um, I'm going to write Z1 for um, the type that says the first qubit is in the zero basis or in the Z basis. And that allows me to simplify this type a little bit. Now I'm going to use a, um, basically a subtyping rule, which um, allows me to distribute the um, intersection over arrows. Um, and now we have that the, both qubits being in the computational basis states gives me a Z1 and um, a Z times Z tensor Z. And once I know that the first qubit is separable, in this case, obviously the second qubit is separable. So what's the outcome here? The outcome here, is that C0 behaves classically on classical inputs. And that's not a big surprise to you, but it sort of gives you a sense of what this system can do. Um, so likewise, um, let me give you another example. So we know that C0 using the notation from the previous slide takes X1 to X tensor X and Z2 to Z tensor Z. We can combine that as an intersection. That's a standard typing rule. We can distribute again as we did previously. And here we have the outcome, X tensor X intersect Z tens tensor Z. And that's the way we will, we represent a bell pair in our type system. So what's missing from this very abbreviated version of, of the original, our original Gottesman types paper? A few things. So one thing is normal forms for types. This isn't, 
typically necessary. You could have multiple types that fundamentally that are isomorphic to one another, but it turns out to be important for recognizing separability and being able to met and being able to type measurement. So that's going to be step one. Another thing we're missing is types for measurement itself, which is important in quantum computing. And uh, finally, and, and probably most obviously, we're missing universality. And that is, our type system can only type Clifford circuits right now, and that's not very useful. So we can boil down the question of universality, if we want to, to how do we deal with T gates in our type system? Um, and I'll show you that we can also deal with other arbitrary other gates, but T suffices to give us universality. So let's start by normalization, with normalization. Our goal is to have a sort of row echelon form for types. Uh, I'm kind of making correspondence to what's called the check matrix representation of these stabilizers. So here, basically, what we want is we want this sort of diagonal looking intersection type where we have an X in the first column, uh, an X or Z in the second column, X or Z in the third column, and everything below there is it going to be I's. You can have, in principle, an X and a Z in the same column, but you can't have more than one X or more than one Z. Um, so, and the rule we're going to use to do this is we know that if psi is an eigenstate of A intersect B, that is of A and B, then it must be an eigenstate of AB. That's, you know, very simple multiplication. So we'll use this rule to simplify our types. Let's see that in practice. So I want to normalize this type. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for an X in the first column. I find one right at the bottom here. I'm going to move that up to the top. Now I look to see if there are any more X's. There aren't. So I'm done with this top row and first column. Now I move to the second row. I see a Z. OK, that's significant. I don't want any more Zs in this column. But I found one. So how do I get rid of it? I just multiply this tensor um, type by the type below it. This simplifies trivially to I, I, Z. And I'm done with this row. Now there's only one row left. Not much to do with it. Why is this form better than the previous form? Well, there's two things that I know that I wouldn't otherwise have. Um, firstly, I can show that I, I can see that the third term here is showing that the, the third qubit is separable from the first two qubits because the rest of the qubits are I. And also, I can see that the first two qubits are in a bell pair. So now I basically completely characterize this state as a bell pair um, tensored with a, a third separable qubit. Um, now, this actually proves useful for when I do measurement. Um, because so assume I'm measuring the first qubit here. Well, the outcome of measurement is necessarily going to be in the computational basis state if I measure in the computational basis state. Now, I look at the remaining um, type um, elements of my type here, and this x tensor x tensor i is incompatible incom with, with the z1, so I drop that. And the remainder characterizes my state, and it actually characterizes it very well as z1 tensor z2 and tensor z3. So in other words, I now have three separable qubits, each in a computational basis state. So that's nice. Um, so then um, finally, and most importantly, I want to add T. So we kind of got our types to begin with by, so for any U, U takes an N to U times N times U dagger. So um, for the T gate acting on a Z, T times Z times T dagger is trivially just Z. We've just rotated and rotated it back. So T has type Z to Z. 
on x, tx, t dagger has this type one over square root of two x plus y. Um, so that's the type we can give t on x. And note that we're adding something new here. We're adding the possibility of scaling by numbers that aren't plus or minus one and um, adding these types together. We call these additive types. Um, note that this is general. It's not only specific to T. Every two by two operator can be expressed as a co combination of I, X, B, I, X, Y, and Z. And for Hermitian operators, we can even drop the I term. And therefore, we can give any unitary matrix a type. But and, and conveniently, these all distribute over addition, so things are going to continue to behave nicely. Um, the only issue um, is, of course, we don't want to add every single unitary to our type system. That would be um, creating too large a type system. You don't want to do these ad hoc. So we'll look at T itself. And instead of driving a type for T dagger, we'll show how you can, instead of creating a type for T dagger from scratch, we'll figure out how to derive it. So T dagger is seven T's in a row or equivalently a Z followed by an S followed by a T. So all of those have type Z to Z. So trivially T dagger has type Z to Z. What about if we apply it to an X? So Z has type X to negative X. S has type X to Y, therefore negative X to negative Y. And finally, when we apply the T, we're going to have to look at this negative Y. Well, we don't really have rules pertaining to Y, so we're gonna decompose Y, which really Y we treat as just notation for I, X, Z to begin with. Um, we independently apply the um, T um, rule to all the portions of I, X, and Z. I is just a constant, so nothing happens. T takes z to z, so basically we just get an i, over, a one over square root of two x plus z in the middle here, and then if we just if we're to simplify that, then we get one over square root of two, really x minus y. So that ultimately will get us the type for t dagger. Um, for a slightly more interesting example, we can look at typing the Toffoli gate. So this is the standard decomposition for Toffoli. Um, and if we want to know that we got this right, we would like to at least know that the Toffoli gate acts classically on three Z qubits. So conveniently, it's really easy to prove that it takes Z1 to Z1 because the T gate actually never acts on anything but a Z when we, or an I, when we um, start with Z1 or Z2. The only slightly complicated case is on Z3, but it winds up being okay because our last element is in fact going to be a Z coming out of this. And since the first two things are separable, Z1 um, intersects Z2 intersects Z3 is gonna produce Z1 intersects Z2 intersects Z3. Once again, we've shown that Toffoli acts classically on classical inputs. And that's a nice guarantee that we haven't messed anything up. Um, as a final example of our type system in action, um, I wanna show you an example of gate injection. So we want to create a gate that has type X to some A times X plus B times Y and maintain Z. So this is some arbitrary Z rotation, just for this example. And we have a eigenstate of AX plus BY. So we're gonna create this circuit and that eigenstate of AX BY is typically gonna be a magic state. And it's, you know, we're using that to create a state that we otherwise couldn't create like a T gate. So we have this simple little circuit. I'm not gonna go through the derivation a, because it's complicated, and B, because it requires me to add a union here. But we get out exactly what we want. C, acting, if the second qubit is in the Z state, we get a Z out of this contraption. And if the second qubit's in an X state, we get an AX plus BY term out of this circuit. So 
Um, that's just a nice example. There's a lot of additional examples and next steps. So one thing is once we have added the, the T gate and these additive types, we do exit the realm of efficiently simulable um, quantum computing. And therefore we have to be careful to not allow our type system itself to blow up. Um, we have to figure out how to modify our normalization procedure to handle additive types. Um, we want to consider projections, which are easy to represent using additive types as perhaps a better, better way to mo model measurement. And finally, and this has been a goal for a while, but we haven't yet done it in part because we've had to build up a bit of a framework, is we want to have types for error correcting codes. So you should be able to take a error correcting code, particularly a simple one like a Steam code or a Shores code, and simply um, create types for these, for your logical qubits out of your simple types for physical qubits. And uh, that's it.